When we look at the best servers in the history of the game, what we see is style and not fundamentals. The fundamentals are deeply embedded into the service motion. So in today's video, I'm gonna show you the difference between style and fundamentals on the tennis serve. So when I show you the next three styles, you're gonna immediately know who I'm trying to copy. So this style right here, I don't need to tell you who this is. This is John McEnroe. How about this style right here? Take a look at this serve and you'll immediately know who I'm trying to mimic, okay? This is Sampras, and how about this one? This one is a little bit more tricky, and let me try to get it down, and this is Becker. So the tennis serve is a very complex motion. We're utilizing the entire body. We also are using our non-dominant side for the toss, and this is why there's a lot of stylistic elements when it comes to this shot, and one of them is your rocking motion. So in the rocking motion, you're gonna see all kinds of styles among the professional players. And how you exactly do the rocking motion, it doesn't really matter, but some of the things that are gonna be useful in your service motion are gonna be the following things. So in the rocking motion, what I usually teach my players is to have the racket and the ball inside the court. This can help. This is not absolutely a must. It is a stylistic choice. Some players have their wrist bent like Raonic and Isner, and other players have the racket a little bit more neutral. What I recommend is that you do open the strings in the very beginning of your serve. This does matter because as you take in the racket up into the trophy phase, the racket is more likely going to remain on the hitting side of the body. And having the ball and the racket inside the court can help having the weight firmly on that front foot so that when we transfer the weight onto the back foot, we get this rocking motion. So we go from the front foot onto the back foot. We can also lift the tip of the front foot up in the air, which can help us put more weight onto that back leg. How exactly you do this part, it really doesn't matter as long as you are firmly putting the weight on your front foot, you have the racket and the ball inside the court, and then shifting the weight onto your back foot. Now what happens next is gonna be a little bit more complex and you're gonna see all different type of styles among the professional players. So most players will shift the weight onto the front foot as they initiate the toss. And this is where the style is gonna differentiate from player to player. So some players will have the racket and the ball go up together. Other players will lag the racket behind the toss. So in other words, you will go forward as you initiate the toss, then instead of going up with the racket arm, you're gonna have the racket arm lag behind. This happens to be the most common way the elite players serve. Out of the top 20 best servers of all time, 19 out of 20 serve with a lag. The only one who doesn't is Andy Roddick. So even though the lag is a stylistic choice, the up together type movement is not wrong by any means. It turns out that the lag serve has the most advantages. It's also the easiest one to execute because we are separating the take up with the racket from the tossing motion. In other words, we don't have to do this motion together. We can se separate these actions by tossing the ball first and lagging the racket behind. This is a far easier method than having the hands go up together. However, it is not wrong by any means to have the hands go up together. If you are successful with that type of style, then by all means continue doing so. And how we toss the ball and take the racket up into the trophy phase is also very stylistic. So there's going to be three different ways to toss the ball. You can toss the ball with your toss arm going parallel to the baseline. You can toss it diagonally into the court or you can have the toss arm go straight. You can also be slightly bent as you toss the ball a la Ivo Kalovic and Rafael Nadal or you can also be completely straight with your toss arm as you're executing your tossing motion. And when it comes to the racket arm going up into the trophy phase, there are so many different ways to do it. It's almost as if every player does it a little bit different. So let me show you a few styles. So one style is the Pete Sampras, Serena Williams style where the racket will go all the way back. In other words, the tip of the racket will point towards the back fence and both Serena and Sampras will then pull the arm in into the trophy phase. There's also the Petra Kvitova and Kristina Pliskova style, which is a very elegant style where the racket will not go all the way back here. It will go diagonally back. So in other words, it will go towards the corner of the back fence and then from here into the trophy position. And then there's the Novak Djokovic or Sam Querrey style where the racket will go to the side as it's going up. So it doesn't really matter how the racket ends up in here. You have to find the style that works best for you. Personally, I am more comfortable doing a Djokovic style take up where my racket is going parallel 
towards the side fence as it's going into the trophy position. Another style that you rarely see on tour, but I'm going to bring it up because I know you guys are going to ask me about it in the comment section, that is the Andy Roddick serve. That is an abbreviated serve where both the toss arm and the hitting arm don't go down. You kind of start high like this and the racket goes straight up. This is something that will work for some players. What I find with the vast majority of players that try this style, they don't have a fast enough arm, they don't have fast enough body movements and therefore they get a lot less power and a lot less control with a serve like that. And when it comes to the stances, this is where we have a vast variety of different ways you can position your feet throughout the service motion. This again is a stylistic preference from that's different from player to player and you have to figure out what works best for you. If you're interested in finding out in great detail how this works, check out my video titled Pinpoint versus platform. When it comes to the trophy phase or trophy position, this is also going to be stylistic. So some players will be more towards the hitting side of the body as they're taking the bracket up into this position. Other players will be more vertical. And yes, some players will be slightly more towards the non-hitting side. It doesn't really matter how you do it as long as you're in this area. You don't want to be completely flat with a racket like this, uh, horizontal to the ground. This is going to be a loss of range of motion is this definitely not something that you want to do on your serve if you're just slightly over towards this side uh, this is acceptable however i will say that the most optimal way to do it is to have the racket more on the hitting side of the body with the wrist slightly flexed this will prevent you from some very common mistakes such as the waiter serve it definitely can help if the racket is positioned this way once you start dropping the racket. Some players, as they go into the trophy phase, will open the wrist too much and end up with this type of position that does reduce range of motion. So you gotta remember that once we hit the trophy phase on a serve, you're also gonna be loading the body and there's also gonna be some stylistic preferences between the players. So most of the best male servers of all time will have a position of what I call the reverse C. So if you're looking at my body, from this position, it looks like a reverse letter C where I'm on my toes, I'm bending my knees, and my chest is up towards the sky, and my body is bent backwards. Now, some players will not have this position. They will have more of a J a loading position where they are bending the knees, they're on their toes, but the upper body will be more straight. You will often see this on a WTA tour and both styles are perfectly fine to use. Some players will have some difficulties with range of motion. They won't be able to bend the body backwards. And if that's the case, only bending the knees and getting on the toes while the upper body is more straight is a perfectly acceptable loading position. And how about the hip? The hip is also a stylistic choice. Some players will throw the ball way inside the court and those players will usually have the hip go inside the baseline as they're leaning forward. This will, this will give players more balance as they do so. However, there are also some players who will toss the ball a little bit closer to the baseline a la Federer. And in those cases, it doesn't make a lot of sense to stretch the hip out. Those players tend to be a little bit more upright. This is a stylistic choice. However, I will say that you can gain a lot of benefit from throwing the ball inside the court. Naturally, as you throw the ball more inside the baseline, you will get automatic forward momentum. So it does help tremendously when you throw the ball inside the court and you're leaning forward to slightly have the hip go into the court, which will give your body a lot more balance. So when it comes to toss locations, depending on what serves you're hitting, this is also going to be styled. Some players are capable of hitting all serves from 12 o'clock, while other players will have different locations for different serves. Most commonly, players will throw the ball a little bit more towards the left if they're right-handed, if they're attempting a kick serve, or if they're attempting a slice serve, they will throw the ball slightly more towards the right. This is perfectly okay to do. However, I will say, if you are able to hit all serves, from 12 o'clock, this is a great disguise and is possibly the most optimal way to prevent your opponent from being able to read the serve. So up to this point, we're talking about a lot of style on the serve. This is why all players will have a different looking serve. But if we look deeper, this is where we find the fundamentals deeply embedded into the service motion. So once this serve gets unloaded, it gets accelerated, the movement is so fast that most of the things that happen inside of this movement are going to happen intuitively. In other words, all players without any exception will drop the racket very low. So we will not find a shallow racket drop 
at the high level. All racket drops are going to occur where the tip of the racket is going below the lower back area. The only exceptions to this are players who have shoulder problems and problems with range of motion. Madison Brengel is the only player that I've been able to see who doesn't have a low racket drop and this is based on a shoulder injury. So apart from her, I'm not aware of any player who doesn't have a deep racket drop and the explanation for that is simple. It is happening as a result of the acceleration. So the players are not consciously dropping the racket below their lower back area. It naturally goes there from the acceleration that's created. Also, all players will pronate into the contact. So once the racket has dropped very deeply and it comes out on this side, now the racket will go up towards the contact on edge. So you will never see a high level player open the racket face right here and then not pronate into the contact. All high level players will have the tip of the racket towards the back fence while the racket is on edge in this particular position and they will then pronate into the contact and again just like the racket drop this is simply a result of the acceleration that's being created so players are not consciously pronating into the ball it is happening automatically and it's not something that high level players ever think about so not only is the racket drop and the pronation into the contact a fundamental element of the serve but it's also the contact itself so the contact will also be something that players are not aware of because it's happening so quickly but it's going to be the same for all high level players so on a kick serve the racket head will be a little bit more positioned towards the side as players make contact on a slice and a flat serve however the contact is going to be more vertical in other words the tip of the racket is going to be more positioned towards the sky Also, where contact is made will be the same for all high-level players. So generally on a kick serve, the contact is going to happen a little bit further behind, while on a flat serve, it's going to be a little bit more in front of the head. Again, this is something that happens naturally on players. Players are not necessarily aware where contact is made. Of course, they can feel it if they make contact way further behind, but if you ask the player, where do you exactly make contact on the serve, they wouldn't be able to tell you. And the reason for that is simple. The contact occurs in a few milliseconds and players are therefore not conscious of it. How about the finish? This is also a fundamental element of the serve. So all serves will have a tendency to have a more lateral delivery. In other words, it's natural for the racket to go more towards the side. So there's going to be a forward approach on all serves and then most serves will have a little bit more of a lateral movement. This is a natural movement of the racket, especially if we are directing the ball towards the right. Yes, there's going to be some flat servers like Daniil Medvedev who will sometimes have a more forward delivery where the racket goes straight through the court like this even on a flat serve. But generally speaking, most players have a slight lateral delivery on the flat serve and a more lateral delivery on both the kick serve and the slice serve. And this is something that players are doing consciously, absolutely not. Again, like I said before, this movement of the serve, when we are, are unloading the serve, the racket accelerates so fast. It is accelerating to 100 miles an hour on some players and the movement is simply over too quickly for the players to do anything consciously. It's over in a blink of an eye. Even if you watch players serve on TV, you can't really see what happens in this area of the serve when they drop the racket, when they make contact and shortly after contact, that part of the serve is not visible to the naked eye. And of course, the players are not consciously executing any of those actions. Now, when we look at the serve a little bit further after contact, so when the racket is finishing down here, this is where we see some different styles. So there are some players who will let the racket swing out all the way like this and let it loop out on this side. And there's other players who will have the racket stop a little bit sooner. There's also vast differences in how the racket finishes on the flat, the slice and the kick. As long as you are finishing towards your left pocket, if you are right-handed, you're doing a good job. And this is gonna be the case on all serves, even the kick serves. So on the flat serve, you're gonna hit down and forward on the ball. You're gonna to try to go towards your left pocket. 
on the slice serve, you're gonna imagine coming around the ball and then having the palm of your hand going up towards the sky, but also you're going towards your left pocket. However, I will say there's a lot of stylistic differences on the kick serve, especially when it comes to the finish, where some players will finish a little bit more further away from the body, while other players will have the racket come all the way through. This is something that you can test out, you can see what works better. I personally don't bring my racket all the way over on the kick serve. I'm a little bit more comfortable stopping somewhere around here. So guys, here's the important question. Can you change your style on the serve? You absolutely can. And one player that changed her style is Petra Kvitova. If you remember, when Petra won her first Wimbledon, she had an abbreviated serve a la Andy Roddick. And then a few years later, she changed into a full lag and a serve that was more continuous and more flowing. In my opinion, it looked a lot better. So if Petra can do it, so can you. It's absolutely okay to experiment with different style, whether it be your stances, whether it be the different type of take backs, whether it be a different type of toss styles, you have to experiment with everything and find what works best for you. And guys, like I said in the beginning of the video, the fundamentals of the serve are deeply embedded inside the service action. These are things that all high-level players do the same. And how do you get there? This is the real question. You have to set the serve up the right way. There are also a lot of fundamentals in how the serve is set up as I described today. So the way you're going to have these fundamental elements inside the most accelerated part of the serve, which is the racket drop and the moment the racket starts approaching the ball, this is what a lot of recreational players are obsessed with all these things are going to happen naturally if you set up to serve the right way and if you accelerate it properly